Hello, and welcome to Nerdcast number 61. It's a manly, manly Christmas. Uh, I am your host, Brian Martinez, and uh, currently I am joined by Max and Scott, two guys who sound way too similar, but I swear to God, they are two different guys. Do we? <laughs> I think people get you guys confused, yes. Yeah, they actually do, dude. Like, I remember on a couple shows ago, somebody was uh, calling me up for something that you actually said, and he's like... <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He At was least you didn't have the guy calling. It's telling me to go fuck you and fuck you in your face from he the was, last one, like two weeks ago or whatever it was. Too. Yeah, yeah, somebody was real mad at me. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said bad things about oh, Iron Man. What, what was it about Iron Man? That's <laughs> right. About Iron Man. Iron they Man, took great offense to it. It was yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> I triggered somebody. <laughs> he was. He was like fuck him. Yep, That's all right. I, I, it's a good thing he wasn't a Vision fan, or he might be really angry. Oh, <laughs> but, um, man. Yep. <laughs> I tore Vision and knew and didn't well, know. He was, <laughs> for you devote, devoted uh, Vision fags out there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I'm sure there's so many of them. Uh, you know there are, man. My buddy Tony used to be one. He was like, no, God I, damn, Vision is so cool, man. He gets to get with Scarlet Witch. And I was like, whatever, dude. You're so dumb. <laughs> Like you're so oh. stupid. I, I, you know, not real. <laughs> from an aesthetic point of view, I always thought the vision was aesthetically pleasing. Um, really? But the yeah, I like the, I like the red. Well, okay, so he's festive, and he fits the theme <laughs> that we're talking about. He no, always worked uh, with. Uh, he always looked like a Jack Kirby color scheme to me, and I always yeah, that. He, well, I hated Kirby's I was, color schemes. They're awful. See, like that's the thing, though. When I was a little kid, oh. I hated Jack Kirby's artwork. I really? thought it was so fucking ugly when I was a little kid. And I thought it looked weird, and I thought, this guy can't draw. <laughs> Everybody's unattractive. What's up with these fucking outfits? That None of it makes sense. But yeah. as I got older, and I started to like learn how to draw, and I you know, was getting into doing comics, and um, I started to grow an appreciation for what he was doing because... Yeah. While he did, you know, take a lot of liberty with an anatomy and design, and sometimes you thought he's just making shit up as he's going, <laughs> like, like the way he's doing. I will put some circles here and some lines here, you yeah, know. You, does. Yeah, and yeah, like, well, let's make this armor look kind of Roman, but we're just going to add a whole bunch of detail. Um, but you know, when I got now the now you know today, I actually really do like Kirby stuff because it's very different like from everybody else considering yeah. how old it is and a lot of guys are trying to recapture right. what he's doing and they're not nailing it plus and maybe this is just uh, the the uh, nostalgia fag in me in a way but what I see what people do today a lot of more modern designers they seem to be really fixated on what is realistic and what makes sense for comics and what is feasible, and they're getting away from what's fun and fantastic and yeah. kind of larger than life, and Kirby never, you know, he never held on to that shit, so I dig that. Like, when I see people trying to design feasible-looking costumes, they end up limiting themselves, you know? Yeah. Like, well, there was, like, a Superman for a short time. Uh, it was, like, right up to the New 52, uh, where he... First off, there was a version that had, like, Kryptonian armor, which was basically the Superman costume with lines on it. Yeah. Um, and then there was one, that came, and I was like, okay, yeah. yeah okay. The Jim Lee designed one? Yeah, now it's arm. Yeah, now it's armor. Okay. Right, it's plain, and then plain there was, an, we got rid of the outside underwear because that was so bad. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, so you changed one thing and you think yeah. you just fucking, re, you know, rediscovered the wheel. Yeah, and basically. then later they did another one where it was like, we're going to, you know what, fuck tights. We're going to put them in jeans and a t-shirt that has an oh, S on yeah. it. And I was like, you guys are just, you're, you, you don't get it. Like, you're getting so far away from what, you know, the whole costume thing is that you're yeah. you're missing the point. You're basically so fixated on, you know, how should this look if it's in a film um, that you're forgetting that this is escapism, you know? You're, yeah. you're not having fun with it anymore. I mean, there's you lots of... never it. lost that, though? Bruce Tim never lost that. No, he never did. And he made it work. And that's what I'm yep. saying. Like, you have to... If you just embrace it and you understand that there are people who love it and they um, they do for, you know, reasons they don't need to understand. It's sort of like uh, if you if you try too hard to make something too believable when it, it has no business attempting to do so, <laughs> yeah. you actually have... You run the risk of ruining it. So. Yeah. 
Um, I do appreciate Jack Kirby for uh, for what he did, and I I think that uh, people are still trying to capture that. I mean, oh, yeah. when I watch There's Guardians, lots of clones out there. There's lots yeah. of clones out there. When I watch Guardians of the Galaxy, and the there the one one of the scenes that really stood out for me, where there's a bit where um, the collector is talking about like how the universe was created and shit, like yeah. like the, the 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 Infinity Stones, and right. there's a shot of a celestial with like a you know in the destroying a planet or something with a big mm-hmm. staff, and I was yeah. like, that's some Kirby shit right there. Mm-hmm. Like it had all the circles and the yeah. lines and all the shit that Kirby would have drawn, and yeah, it looked so cool. fucking cool. You know, that was definitely a shout out to Kirby. Yeah. for sure. And it was it was very otherworldly because if it was like a guy in like a tux, it, we wouldn't buy it <laughs> even if it made more sense. You know, even uh-huh. if it was more realistic or a guy in a uh, what's what we call realistic now is basically a motorcycle outfit. Like that's oh, right, what we yeah. call you know like the X Men all wore motorcycle outfits and. Yeah. X Men films. So oh, it's funny they actually sold motorcycle jackets and pants that were modeled after those outfits. Yeah, when the movie came out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, all right. So anyway, we get we get a we digress a little. But uh, yeah. uh, what we're the three of us are here to talk about, and Allison and Hannah may join us later. Um, we're just gonna do a little show about Christmas films, but we're not. The the thing is the theme is to look at films that are uh, that just so happen to take place around Christmas time or may have a Christmas theme but are not like Miracle on 34th Street, Christmas Carol, or White Christmas or It's a Wonderful Life. For those of you guys who may not be aware of that, you're looking for something more fun, less cliche, and less irritating, um, but something that's kind of festive. Yeah. So I was thinking about this. Uh, Yesterday, and um, I have a – well, let me – first off, let me ask uh, you, Scott. Do you have um, a film that comes to mind when you think of something like that? Oh, I do, actually. Actually, there's two things. Like, uh, we talk, well, we talked, about, we talked about the big one yesterday, and that was Die Hard. That's, uh-huh. like, that's, like, that's kind of the go-to when you think of, like, holiday movies, I guess. At least, you know, for me it is. But two other ones that I really, really love are um, Trading Places – and Scrooged, which both take place during the holidays. Yes. Scrooged is, is the most, like, Christmassy of all three, but, I mean, uh, but, yeah, and that's, I just I just love those. Those are all great, though. I think they're all fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Max, have you ever seen Trading Places? Um, I've only seen bits and pieces of it. That's the Dan Aykroyd, uh, Eddie Murphy one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've... Yeah, sorry. When it comes to uh, Christmas, I tend to be a little bit more sappy when it comes to watching the ones that traditionally have to do with Christmas. But, um, yeah, I, I've heard that Trading Places is good, so I should get on that. But, yeah, oh, yeah. Die Hard, absolutely. I watch that every year. Um, you, you listed this in the Skype chat uh, before we did the show, uh, uh, Brian. We, uh, mm-hmm. Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang. That's probably one of the most underrated uh, not just Christmas movie, like I guess you can call it a Christmas movie, but just one of the most underrated movies ever. It's directed by Shane Black, the guy who did uh, um, Iron Man 3, and he also wrote the Lethal Weapon movies, which are also can be related to Christmas as well, if you want. Uh, both are awesome action movies. Both are awesome thrillers. I highly suggest that you check them out uh, if you just want an excuse to watch an action movie around uh, Christmas that isn't Die Hard, even yeah. though you shouldn't ever get tired of Die Hard, <laughs> otherwise you have no soul. Yeah, right. Actually, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is a really underrated film in general. Mm-hmm. I I remember when I saw the, and maybe it was the timing because right around the time that that movie was coming out, weren't there uh, like a Tarantino movies pretty um, pretty huge? Like people were. When I mean what I mean by that is that there was it was around the time where people were trying to emulate him. So you had things like uh, Two Days in the Valley, and um, uh, you don't even remember that movie, right? It was basically yeah. like somebody trying to do a Tarantino film, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't as good. Um, yeah, but at, at least in it? that, uh, yeah. it was Val Kilmer and it was Robert Downey Jr. And oh, no, also Two Days in the Valley, I meant. Oh, that was like something with Charlize Theron, and it, it was oh, just okay. like a kind of a crime caper type of thing, but. But no, but uh, you go go ahead, Max, about uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah, uh, just a fun fact about that movie. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if it weren't for that movie, Robert Downey Jr. probably would have never became Iron Man because it was through that movie that John Favreau, who directed the first Iron Man movie, recommended to the execs at Marvel, particularly Kevin Feige. Uh, they recommended him after Tom Cruise stepped aside to play uh, Iron Man 
and they thought, hey, maybe this guy can actually capture the essence of what a Tony Stark would be, sort of like a, uh, an intellectual, pseudo, sort of not really wise kind of guy. Just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because when you watch Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, you do see a lot of Tony Stark-isms from Downey Jr. in that movie. Hmm. Can we talk about something real quick? Yeah. Go Tom Cruise is going to be Iron Man? He, he yeah. almost was, yeah. Oh, I, my God. I just had that in my head, and I was just imagining, okay, how this little guy, because he's, <laughs> he's a small well, man. Tom Cruise is tiny, too. I mean, Tom Cruise. No, uh, no I mean Robert Tom Downey Cruise. Jr. is tiny as fuck, he, too. He is. Uh, he is, but uh, I think Tom Cruise is smaller. He's like he's He looks smaller. Like, he's like an elf. Well, but you know, when they have the, the parts of Tom, with um, Robert Downey Jr., he's actually walking on a stand-up. Like he's got a raised floor, like on the scenes, like he's with when he's with Chris Evans and other people. Like yeah. there's some like behind the scenes shots where they show him, like he's actually got a raised floor to walk on because he's so fucking tiny. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. You know, but, uh, like I'll be one of those dissenters when it comes to Tom uh, Cruise as Iron Man. I thought he would have been a great Iron Man because he's a great action star, and plus he does have some of those sort of sarcastic quippy sensibilities that you could see in an Ethan Hunt or that mm-hmm. guy that he played in Edge of Tomorrow, but, you know, thank God we have Robert Downey Jr. Sorry, he's, man, don't get me he's wrong. He's not funny, though. He's not funny like like Robert Downey Jr. is. I don't think, sure. he, has the, I don't think he has the chops to do the, the humorous parts. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I've seen sort of elements of that, but I agree, like, in terms of just being able to embody what the Tony Stark is that we know now, Robert Downey yeah. Jr. was obviously the best choice, and I think Tom Cruise realized that because he stepped aside for that exact reason. Oh, okay. My, okay. my main thing is, um, as much as I, I do think Tom Cruise is a good actor too, and I think he gets a lot of shit, and it's likely because of his whole like Scientology thing. But the thing that um, I think uh, is probably the best reason why it's probably better to have uh, Robert Downey Jr. is I'm not I, okay. It's not that I don't think he can, but I've never really seen Tom Cruise in a film where he has to share the spotlight with other people. Yeah. Like normally, he is always the star of his films, and if it, if, you know, best case scenario, he'll do like a buddy film or a film where he's basically like playing off of one other person, as he did in um, Edge of Tomorrow and uh, Rain Man. Yes, and uh, uh, that was the other one I, I was just thinking about. But essentially, where it's just him and a co-star. Um, mm-hmm. But to like it, it, imagining Tom Cruise in the Avengers trying to you know, balance, like, basically be in a film with all these other actors. Um, I, that would have been really interesting. I wonder if that would have happened. Or if he would have gone the way of Edward Norton and basically would have, uh, you know, been like, well, if I can't be the star, I don't want to do this movie. Um, which I'm not really sure that that's what happened. But, you know, I've just, I I think that, that there are people in Hollywood that don't play as well with others or maybe don't work <laughs> as well um, right. as they do on their own. Someone in the chat just said, I'd like to see Peter Dinklage Iron Man. Um, <laughs> speaking of small Iron Men, but yeah. you know, I only bring that up because I think Peter Dinklage would play the hell out of Gremlin, and he'd be able to be the Titanium Man, but I don't know that they would ever do that. <laughs> that would be the shit, though. Are you Come familiar on. with Are you familiar with a character from the X-Men called Puck? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. well, you know when Alpha Peter Flight. Dinklage, yeah, when Peter Dinklage was uh, a cast to be in X Men: Days of Future Past, everybody just assumed that he was playing Puck rather than um, the guy who played what was it, um, Trask. Oh, Trask, there, there you go. Thank you. Oh wait, you're you're thinking Puck is actually from Alpha Flight, isn't he? Yeah. He's yeah, a little hairy yeah. acrobat guy. Okay, he was in yep. Alpha Flight. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, but may, he may have teamed up with the X Men too. Who knows? Alpha Flight would be a great fucking movie. Too bad it'll probably never get made. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know Canadian, what though? You know what though? Canadian Hold on. Team. That would be the shit. Given, given the fact that they made Guardians of Galaxy, Alpha oh. Flight's not off the table, I don't think. Oh, actually, that's oh. probably more on the table than Guardians is. Yeah, but well, I mean, um, seriously. And you, know, <laughs> and you know what? Considering the fact that Fox just fucked up Fantastic Four and all they really have left in terms of good, reliable properties with Marvel is the X Men. They're gonna have to expand it everywhere. They're gonna have to do X Force. They're gonna have to do Excalibur, and then they're gonna have to do Alpha Flight. Well, yeah. X Force is already in the works already. So X Force is. Yeah, X Force. Yeah, they're, they're, okay. they they they've got that in the works right now. It's in the pipeline. Cable, okay, cool. Domino, um, yep. Deadpool. Okay. Yep. Oh, well, 
So we're getting away from uh, the main <laughs> topic. That's fine. <laughs> fine. All right, so here's the, here's another uh, movie that's a Christmas movie. Well, we mentioned Die Hard, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Lethal Weapon. Um, mm. And that's that takes place during the holidays, so if you want to get your buddy movie on. Um, and uh, let's see. There's uh, You said Trading Places. Um, I, Gremlins, so, actually oh, Gremlins, Gremlins yeah. takes place during... Uh, Christmas time. Uh, First Blood, the Rambo film, <laughs> is a Christmas movie. So, you know, sort totally. Of. <laughs> yeah, what, whenever I'm fucking watching, like, a movie during Christmas, it'll be First Blood, and I just, I totally want to just reminisce on, you know, the things that veterans go through, and just post-traumatic stress <laughs> yeah, disorder. We're on Rambo shooting Brian Dennehy in the knees. You know? <laughs> Wait, is it, for, yeah. <laughs> you know, we should <laughs> it's never over. Never. It's never over. <laughs> <laughs> do a better uh, Rambo oh, impression than I do. <laughs> well, the, yeah, there's some pretty depressing ones. Speaking of Robert Downey Jr., Less Than Zero is oh, also the Christmas God. movie. <laughs> That's a brilliant movie too, man. I love it's, that. It's good, but uh, I don't it's know. on. It's actually on HBO Go right now. Uh, I was just like, what? I was kind of surprised because, yeah. like, that was, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing to pop up all of a sudden, but yeah. Um, if you have HBO, go check it out. Yeah, if if you want to get your laughs on, though, I also recommend uh, Bad Santa, with um, yeah, yeah with uh, what's Billy his Bob name? Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton. Yes. Uh, that before he went crazy. Yeah. What, what was that? Before he went crazy. But yeah. Well, wait. Before? <laughs> I thought he was always a little <laughs> bit off. I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you know, so it's just if you ever watch that interview that he did on the CBC once, you should check it out. It's hilarious. Well, not really, because, you know, he, he probably feels really bad about it, but, yeah, go oh, check wait, it out. Oh, wait, the one where he loses his shit and walks out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, before we uh, run down uh, the rest of the movies, can I just uh, pose sort of a fun question to you guys, because you brought yeah. up Lethal Weapon yeah. and stuff like that. Who would win in a fight, John McClane or Martin Riggs? Martin Riggs. Ooh, yeah. Really? Martin Riggs. Yeah, because, okay, look, John McClane, this is the, the reason. I, it's an easy one. Martin Riggs is trained. He's insane. He knows what he's doing. You know, he's unpredictable. Uh -huh. He's, like, completely maverick, right? He's just, just, but he's a badass. Like, like legitimately a badass, right? Right. He's John a fighter. McClane, yes, John McClane is, he is just a cop. Like he's a regular guy. He's an everyman more and more than anything. At least, okay. at least John McClane as he was in like the early Die Hard movies. Like if we're look, we're talking about like the godlike. We're talking John super McClane. John McClane, or original yeah, like, McClane. like yeah. super John McClane from yeah. like the later Die Hards, where he's just like, <laughs> didn't he like fight like some parkour master in like one of the last? Yeah, yeah. Ones? In an in elevator. Good day to Die Hard. And, yeah, and when he shows up, it's like he's he's like a legend that precedes himself. Like yeah, yeah. that's not John McClane. That's like no, some no. you know Serpentor clone of him. Yeah. Right. That's like but, the John McClane made by people who heard of the Die Hard movies but actually didn't watch him and didn't get the fact that he's supposed to be an every every man hero. Yeah. But well, how if, about this? Let me throw a wrench in the works here. Then let's, yeah. let's 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 change the question a little bit. Who would win in a game of hide and seek, Riggs <laughs> or McClane? <laughs> okay. Because yeah. The fight here is an obvious one, and uh, but I think this one's obvious too. But it's it's a fun little thought experiment. So who do you, who do you think who would win in a game of hide and seek? Well, is it like a game of hide and seek, or is it a game of seek and destroy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. That, that answers my question. Hide okay, and seek no. and destroy. Yeah. yeah hide okay. and seek and destroy. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Who would win in that? Who do you think? It's, Probably, you know what? Probably McLean, just because he's hiding like in the vent shaft and he's, you know, trying to get <laughs> info on the perps and how to take them down. Right. Whereas uh, Riggs is just sort of all over the place, running into gunfire because he can't hide. He might as well just take it out straight on, right? right? And that might lead to his downfall. So maybe yeah. John McLean. Okay. Yeah, I would say John McLean for those reasons. He's he's got more to lose and he's more cautious. Right. Riggs just doesn't like if it isn't like Murtaugh keeps Riggs from killing himself basically. <laughs> yeah. So right, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> if you take Murtaugh out of the situation, then you're unleashing the dog, but yeah. you're also putting it in harm's way. So yeah, Murtaugh's yeah. a social worker basically throughout the entire series. <laughs> yeah, Riggs, Riggs. Um, you told for the shit. <laughs> 
Goddamn. But yes, um, because, um, and that's one of the advantages that McLean has is that he he operates better alone for the most part, or or he's on the phone with uh, you know the father from Family Matters. Oh yeah, uh, Black Ops. Yeah, I shot a kid. Um, <laughs> 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 but but that's a good question, Max. I I um I think that's that I love cop. Oh, by the way, speaking of buddy movies, Iron Man three qualifies as a Christmas film. Mm. Yeah, you can go ahead and watch that. <laughs> it does, and you know what? Uh-huh. I have to admit that even though um, at first uh, Iron Man three was, um, well, I really didn't like it. There was like I had a lot of issues with it, but yeah. uh, you know, now that I've like all the movies have come out and I've kind of watched them all again, like in order. And uh, I took your advice, Max. You said you should watch. You know, if you I think it was you that said if you watch Iron Man one, two, and three. It, you know, it makes it makes them individually better uh, in their own context, and I actually do like Iron Man three. I, I mean, it doesn't feel as superhero-y as the others, but it's still a really good movie, and it does a really good job. Um, yeah. You know, just being fun and engaging, and I like to see, especially uh, watching Robert Downey Jr. interact with that kid, because um, mm-hmm. it's like completely makes fun of the whole, like, uh, what do they call it, the spunky kid sidekick character that wants right. to help out, and the, you know, like, the hero is like, you sh- it's dangerous, and he does it anyway, and puts himself in harm's way. But in this one, it's like Robert Downey Jr. is resisting the entire time. He's like, no, I don't I don't like kids, you know. I'm, I'm, he ends up, like, doing something for him, but... Yeah. yeah. It's funny, though, when uh, he initially <laughs> left him, he's like, uh, <laughs> you know, the kid's like, so you're just going to leave me here, like my dad? Ooh, yeah. 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 Ooh. <laughs> You're tripping me, aren't you? I'm cold. I can tell. You know how I can tell? It's because we're connected. <laughs> that movie's so goddamn corny, though. Uh. By the way, thanks for bringing up Iron Man 3, because I just started to notice this while we're talking about Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. Uh, what is it with the main characters having these token black... Uh, so, well, not necessarily sidekicks, but just Best partners. friends. Yeah, because like in Iron Man three, you had Rhodey. In Lethal Weapon, you had Murtaugh. In uh, Die Hard three, you had Sam L. Jackson as Zeus. But what the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it was. Uh, I think what it may have been was a way to uh, because the, the characters were certainly peers, and they were very helpful, but I, I guess it was a way to, um, because, like, okay, here's the thing about Lethal Weapon. Would you say Murtaugh was less or or less important, equal, or more important no, more. than Riggs? He was more, because he was, he, was he was what started the story off. Riggs came in as an aside. Right. Murtaugh is basically, uh, he is us. He's like the regular guy of yeah. the two, right? And yeah. Riggs is like the, the, the loose cannon that we're supposed to Look at with Murtaugh and say, "What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Why did he dislocate his shoulder like that?" Right? right. So we're not supposed to relate to Riggs as much as Murtaugh. Um, mm. So there's that, and also I think this, to a degree, the same thing is the case in Die Hard, sort of, be- because well, it, the the cop from Family Matters, I can't remember the character's name in Carl Winslow. Uh, Carl Win- no, I know that his name in the show, but I'm talking oh. about his <laughs> the character's name from Die Hard is not the same. He just oh like, right right. Powell? Powell, yeah, Sergeant Powell. Powell. Yeah, Sergeant Powell. Okay. Uh, Sergeant Wait, what's Powell. What's the name he calls him, though? Because he doesn't tell him his real name. What's his, oh, what's the... I can't remember. Oh, his, like, code Powell. name? Roy. Yeah, yeah just call him... Hey, Roy, no, Roy. Roy was... Roy was uh, Roy? McLean's was, name. John McLean's name. What was the cop's name, though? Come on, he Chad. He had a code name? Yeah, he had a code name because he, he couldn't tell him his real name. Oh, okay, hold on a second. Oh, man. Come on, right. Chad. Help us out here. It's been I a little while, heard. but... Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> um, How do you say... Reggie. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> that was, I fell in love in that though, moment. I, no, that oh. was so good. Oh, I, I like when... Because uh, I remember when I first saw that, right? There's a bit where... Um, of the scene where John McClane actually runs into Hans Gruber but doesn't know it's him. Yeah. Oh and, God, are you one of them? And he's like, Oh God, are you one of them? Oh God, don't <laughs> kill me! Oh God! Oh, God. And he's like, oh, me. oh, this was great. Like where where he goes, you want to smoke? Do you smoke? And he's looking at it like he's confessing to like doing drugs. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to put the accent on. Yeah. It's fucking great. <laughs> so bad. 
<laughs> you gotta be on fucking TV with that accent. <laughs> oh God! Don't oh, kill God. me! Kill me! <laughs> oh God! You're one of them. One of those games where they shoot the red paint. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you love it? Do you smoke? Yeah. 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 <laughs> like I'm, I have to yeah. don't Got tell my the, wife. Yeah. <laughs> he does okay. it in the mouth, he's like, ah. <laughs> Oh fuck! This is so good. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Fuck me, man. Anyway, um, but God I bless think... Alan Rickman. Oh shit! Yes, Alan Rickman. Oh, Rickman. Um, by crazy. by Gunthar's hammer, Alan Rickman. I bless grab you. Thar. Grab Thar. Oh, grab Thar's hammer. Okay. Grab Thar's hammer, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Hi. Alan Rickman's answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grant Thaw's hammer, you shall be avenged. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. sorry, Brian. Can we go do ahead. a show about oh, Galaxy oh, Quest? Can we, can we, can we, can we, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, After... yeah, we, we talked a little bit. Uh, we, we definitely are going to do a show on Galaxy Quest. I also want to do one on, uh, I know these aren't Christmas movies, but I really <laughs> want to talk about Tropic Thunder at some point. Oh, God. Because I fucking love Tropic Thunder. Speaking of the greatest performances by uh, Robert Downey Jr. of all time, uh, <laughs> how you can actually make a film where you're literally basically in blackface and not offend anyone because you did such a good fucking job <laughs> is beyond me. So That was kind of ridiculous, yeah. It's so hey. good. Oh, Jingle All the Way. Oh, there's one. Oh, yes. Yes, a terrible man doll. Speaking yep. of going full retard. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, was that directed at me? What? No, 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 no. That was directed at Jingle All the Way. That movie was stupid, oh. but God, it was wonderful. Oh, yeah. Any movie with fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> you know, they were oh. exactly shooting for the stars with that. And, one. <laughs> and for those of you who may forget, the kid that eventually became Anakin Skywalker. Oh, yeah. Jake Lloyd. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, was the, he was the kid. Yep. Oh, my God. Um, he had all the metaclorines. The best part of Jingle All the Way is basically him fighting all the Santas. And then there's like midget <laughs> Santas, and one of them's got nunchucks. And I mean, come on. Like, that, I would just, I, I want to put that fucking scene on just to watch that scene, like, after we're done here. Right? Um, <laughs> screen shared? No, no, like, I, I could. I could. Yeah. Um, just got to keep that timer ready, is all. Plus. Go, I'm gonna go the find thing, it. the thing about Jingle All the Way, though, <laughs> even though I can't watch it anymore just because it's so bad, it's one of the most yeah. quotable movies of all time, guys. For those of you in the chat Is right now, really? whatever, yeah, <laughs> I would absolutely think so. Put that cookie down. If you look up uh, this remix on YouTube, <laughs> it's called the Put That Cookie Down Remix. It's one of the greatest <laughs> things you'll ever hear. Trust me. Oh my God. Put that cookie down. No, no. Not, not Mannequin Skywalker. Jake Lloyd, the little kid. Yeah. It's a different one. Forget, I'm not gonna sit on your lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Come on, shit. I mean it's great. <laughs> no, no, it, it is, it is. Okay, hold on here. I got this. I, I, I actually got the Santa fight scene. Um, I am oh. gonna share it. So it's like oh. two minutes long. Um, yeah, this is this is happening. I'm gonna. Do this. <laughs> this is happening. This is fucking happening. Oh god. Um. <laughs> I need my to get my son the terrible man doll. <laughs> you quiet boy compared to me. That's not that's not this movie, but You um, son of a bitch. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. You know what we're forgetting? We're forgetting probably arguably the greatest while you're loading that up, we're forgetting arguably the greatest Christmas movie of all time, and that's the Charlie Brown Christmas special. I love I, I love Charlie Brown Christmas shit. I know, right? Mm -hmm. Man, shit's the best. And anybody that says it isn't are fucking retarded. That's all there is to it. <laughs> By all the right. way, did you uh like you guys know who Dennis Leary is? Just very quickly before we do this, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, he um he originally did a a Christmas special called "It's a Merry Fucking Christmas," and yeah. in it. He uh, did a parody of the Charlie Brown Christmas special, but in it, he actually gets Charlie Brown to convert to Islam. It's one of the greatest things that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Wait, what was, what was that movie with Dennis Leary where he kidnaps that family? That's a Christmas movie, too. Oh, 
The ref. Oh, it was yes. the ref. Oh, yeah, yes. that happened at Christmas, didn't it? Because like on the posters, he had a uh, he had a Santa hat on, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't going to mention it because like we're just trying to think of movies that aren't necessarily uh, actually connected to Christmas, but the ref. Honestly, it's my all-time favorite Christmas movie. I watched. No, no, it. That, that's really? definitely like if we did something. Uh, I, I'm more so thinking of this as a show about films that are uh, that may take place during Christmas, but they don't. Ne they're not necessarily like about you know Christmas in the sense that often people think of. So the ref is actually a really good fit, just as Die Hard, because even though Die Hard is an action film. Um, Christmas as a theme does come up in the film, you know, several mm -hmm. times, uh, as well as Bad Santa, as well as uh, this jingle all the way. So, you, yeah, th that that's totally a good fit, I think. Okay, so let's see Star. Uh, let's see Schwarzenegger try to. Uh, what's what's gonna happen with him? Oh, why is this so fucking low? Hold on. That maybe the, the the sound on this might be bad. Belushi. That's Jim Belushi. Yep, that's from, Belushi. He partnered up with Schwarzenegger in Red Heat. <laughs> oh God, he's so good. And and fucking um. Oh wait, no, that's Tom Arnold. Never mind, forget it. Sorry. Oh no, not True Lies. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Thieves. Degenerates, lowlifes, thugs, criminals! The North Pole, them are fighting words, partner. <laughs> this uh. shit's selling itself. I like these eyebrows. Oh, I'm sorry, I was getting ready to say. <laughs> okay, Jim, let's see what you do. Put them up. Relax, buddy. Not about to hit a Santa Claus. Come on, come on, what are you doing? Is he Tommy Wiseau all of a sudden? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm, I'm just pausing it. Yes. <laughs> I'm only pausing it so that uh, we don't get DMCA'd by. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> get content straight into <laughs> Ingo. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Where does his eyebrows go? Uh-oh. <laughs> so, so, what was it like in the boardroom when this scene was, they, they cooked this up? They were like, we need to have a scene where Schwarzenegger fights a room full of Santas. <laughs> and what mall has this many Santas on call? Like, that Dude, right? this never happens anywhere. Like, what? <gasps> oh, God. You want to hear a Santa story, guys? <laughs> Do you guys, do you want to hear, oh wait, no, I can't tell this story, never mind, I'll, I'll tell you guys after the show, man. Oh, for Christ's sake. I'm sorry, I just remembered I gotta, it. I gotta see this, I gotta Something see this bad again. happens. Hold on. Yeah. You know that guy totally hit a trampoline right there, right? <laughs> yeah. He's not naturally that springy. That's a lot of Santas. <clears throat> That's a lot of Santas. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? It's a giant uh... Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Getting a major uh, Hulk Hogan Santa with muscles throwback. Oh, no. That's, um, that's, uh, what's his name? The wrestler is guy. The, is that the... Yeah, is that the big show? Yeah, the big that's that him. That yeah, is? that's the one. That's the one. I think it is. <laughs> it looks it's like the same it. nose. I mean, based on his eyes. And yeah, he's got the same yeah. nose too. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, now the they're just ripping, one? <laughs> go, they're ripping ahead, off man. Indiana Jones here. Like they yeah. they brought out the big guy, and it's like he's trying to punch him down, and he won't go until like oh, it's yeah. been a while since I've seen this movie. But just like a hell, like a plane uh, propeller come around and chop him up. 
<laughs> yes, because there's definitely a plane in this room, and it's going to chop that guy up. <laughs> uh, and he's also got the suspenders, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're totally riffing off of that. Got those sure. really high pants, yeah. Hey, is that um <laughs> War with Davis? No, this that's no, no, Davis. that's Mini Me. <laughs> oh my is god. Is that Troy, really? <laughs> that has to does he look like him? <laughs> yeah, it kinda oh, no, does. Man, the teeth I don't are, know about uh, these teeth, but it's no, possible. The teeth are kinda fucked up. Hold on, I mean, he could be wearing you know cross. No, Mini Me had fucked up teeth though. Did he? I don't remember him having fucked uh, up to him. Yeah, I mean, they didn't really show him that much. Well, you know what? That was when he was dressed up as Austin. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dude, did they kill that little guy? I'm saying, right? <laughs> Look at the yeah, he's like, he's he's on about it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, oh, that That's was my friend. Uh, <laughs> The big one's like, oh, that was my best friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's until retirement. He just fucking beat up Master Blaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. Oh, funny. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, this guy's got a... I know this one. I know this little guy. He's got a fucking taser. But what now? Why was this elf carrying a taser? Did he just right. did he feel unsafe in the mall? He would like that morning. He was like, "I'm taking this taser with me to work." Um, <laughs> fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He was oh, like in his lap. He was in death to Smoochie. Um, he was. Uh, oh god, he played one of Ran- Randolph Rainbow Randolph's kids. <laughs> oh, death to Smoochie. Oh, wasn't so good. he? Wasn't he the like the little bad guy in The Watchmen when Rorschach was in prison? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're not, oh. I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. Yeah, that yeah. guy. <laughs> oh yeah. God. Yeah, that was him. That was him. This is a star-studded scene. I'm telling you, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of talent in this bit. Yep. Oh, dude, right in the asshole! Holy shit! It goes for the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you guys play dirty. Oh, Santa don't play. <laughs> oh shit. Or okay. Oh dang. That's, that's enough of that. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, just very quickly before we move on to anything else, Brian. You know how I was telling you before about that "Put That Cookie Down" remix. Yeah. Just, I put a link into the chat. You don't have to play the whole thing. Just play like the first twenty seconds. It's honestly the greatest, funniest thing you will ever hear. <laughs> All right, I promise on. you. I'll, I'll get it. No, no, no. It's, I'm sure. It's two minutes long, and knowing the internet, um, oh crap, stupid ads. <laughs> ad block, man, ad block. <laughs> no, I was told to turn that pesky ad block off. Oh yeah, that's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> turn that pesky thing off. Great. Now Monday, Matt's never gonna come back. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Now. You're yeah. not wrong. <laughs> oh no. Wait, I wonder. Right. I think Death to Smoochie actually happens during Christmas time too. Couldn't think of it. I think part of it does anyway. Probably. Yeah, like wasn't there a yeah. point in that movie where he goes to try and set himself on fire in the middle of Times Square and he's dressed in a Santa suit or something? Oh yeah, Rainbow Randolph. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to commit suicide. Yeah, because he was yeah. just over it, and then the little girl comes and says, "I still love you, Rainbow," and he doesn't do it. Oh god, that's Smoochie's a great fucking movie. But yeah, I so. Rainbow fucking Randolph. <laughs> hey, look everybody, it's a a, a, a it's a rocket ship. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking oh, All right, we're just gonna play the first twenty seconds. All right. <laughs> this is supposed to be good? What? <laughs> what the hell? This is the internet. The internet does oh, beautiful man. things. Internet, if we though. didn't if we didn't have that, then we wouldn't know that they were taking the hobbits to Isengard. So <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. Wait a minute. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard? Oh god. <laughs> yes. The, the hobbits, the hobbits, the hobbits. <laughs> what have you done, Brian? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. Man, I want to go watch Jingle All the Way now. Thanks, oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to go watch Scrooge in a little bit, actually. Right Scrooge on. is good. Yeah, Scrooge um, the is only awesome. thing about... Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a huge thing, but... The only thing about Scrooge that I'm not crazy about is at the end it gets, like, super fucking sappy saccharine. But oh, yeah. I like right. the movie anyway, so... Yeah. Mm. Well, I think, um, it, I think it earned it to have that little bit in there because it was just so, like, just so violent and unapologetic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like Carol King coming in and beating the hell out of him. Is that, what, was, what ghost was she? Was she the past or present? I can't remember. Oh, damn. Oh! Uh, she was the past... No, was she... she the wait, the cab driver was yeah, Mojo the Nixon. present. Yeah. So she was the past, yeah. Okay, yeah, and she's just um, beating the living shit out of him. That was yeah. fucking great. <laughs> By the way, um, just speaking of Bill Murray, a movie that has actually nothing to do with Christmas, but is a movie that people watch around Christmas nonetheless, is Groundhog Day. Anybody ever see that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Groundhog Day's good. I remember the yes. first time I saw that, I hated it. It was something I had to learn to love. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's a very, like, it's one of those movies that really doesn't get the credit that it deserves. I really think that it has one of the best screenplays, just, in terms of just a story that you can tell, it's really, really charming, and I never get tired of it any time that it's on. Well, that was that was the problem I had, like, initially when I first saw it. I didn't watch enough of it to get to the part where it actually started to get a little bit of a heart to it. I was just like, oh, great, it's just a story about this asshole. Eh, whatever, yeah. don't care. And I quit watching it, but when I went back and watched it, and he started like, you know, having the interactions with the homeless guy and all that stuff, I was like, you know, this is this is kind of sweet. This is kind of sweet. You have to admit, Bill Murray plays a guy who's an asshole very well. Yeah, but he has um, an arc though. And but he, no, he him. does have an arc, and it's like yeah. learning, you know, learning from his. Uh, yeah, I just I just didn't stick around long enough to find that in the first place. But when I actually stood by and actually watched it, I was like, well, you know, this is pretty fucking good. This mm-hmm. is solid. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you know, uh, you know another movie that's a Christmas movie that I fucking love, The Long Kiss Goodnight. That's I've another never movie seen movie. that. Oh, that's another. Isn't that another Shane Black movie though? Is yes, that, it is. Yes, it is. That's huh. really good. Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson, and it's a buddy movie, and it takes place around Christmas time, and there's like you know, it has all of the the trappings of a Shane Black Christmas vehicle. Um, directed by Gina Davis's then husband. I don't know if he still is her husband though, but oh, he was um, at the time. He, he was, was his name? Everything. I can't remember his name. Um, Rennie, Rennie Harlan. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah, the, he the in, movie that flopped yeah, horribly too. Cutthroat Island. Yeah. Which actually, Cutthroat <laughs> Island is wait, Cutthroat Island is one of my guilty pleasures. I like that movie. <laughs> I do, I do. Um, and and oh, yes, dude. yes, chat, fight me, motherfucker. <laughs> I like Cutthroat Island, but. Uh, I know it's not that good. Like, sometimes you just have to, like, you know, you can acknowledge that a movie is terribly flawed but still enjoy it. Like, I like Van Helsing, and that's another one I always have to defend. Oh. Like, I, I like oh. Van Helsing. Oh. <laughs> I do. I, oh. I know it's oh, bad. God. I just died a little inside, Brian. <laughs> but, um, all right, we'll, we'll go back to uh, Long Kiss Goodnight. Let's talk about Gina Davis some more. Gina yeah. Davis uh, is is quite excellent in it. Samuel L. Jackson, though, he's he makes that fucking movie. Yeah. He makes that movie great, as well as the villain who's um, I can't remember the I don't remember the guy's name, but he was only in a couple of things. Like he was in this movie, I think it was Existence. You ever see that? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, he was in that, I believe, as uh, the protagonist. But he's like this ultra sarcastic asshole in yeah. Long Kiss Goodnight. Um, Matthew Modine. He was in Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket as Joker. Yeah, Wait. he's always oh, been in a ton of stuff. Yeah. Is that yeah. Matthew Modine? Yeah, apparently. That's what it says here. Oh, yeah. as the be- Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about not in Cuthra Island. Oh, that that is the guy. Night. I'm talking about the guy from Long Kiss Goodnight. Yeah. He, oh. he's, um, he's like the villain in that story. He basically plays the ex-husband of Gina Davis or boyfriend or whatever. Patrick um, Malahide? Gina Davis sure was pretty back in the day. Oh, boy. She's still pretty now. She's got like those Michelle Pfeiffer jeans where she doesn't age. Yeah, she looks. No, no, I saw her in the West Wing, and she looked like she was a little. Mm, a little she's roughish. getting up. No, she's definitely like colliding in slow motion into the wall, but it's <laughs> not as. But she's not as bad considering her age. Yeah. It's not like Julia Roberts, who just like fucking passed through it, like you know. Yeah. Mach two and shit, but uh, um, you could still, you know, Gina Davis can can still uh 
pass as younger than she is, so huh. I, I will admit that. Although Michelle Pfeiffer's got that fucking... Uh, what's the other... There's another actress that can... That looks pretty timeless all the time. Um, I don't know. Have you seen Pfeiffer recently? Like when she was in Dark Shadows, she was no. Kind of I didn't. I She's didn't see Dark Shadows. She was oh, in that. I had no yeah, idea. Dark Shadows is bad, man. Just stay away from it. It's real bad. Oh, it is. It is Johnny Depp chewing the set. And just oh everything. yeah, no. I remember we talked a little bit about it on uh, the Tim Burton show. Oh yeah, that's there. right. Yeah. And uh, oh, I didn't see it. But, uh, no, don't bother. I mean, you know, if you want to watch it, watch it. But I wouldn't recommend it though. There's better. There's better <laughs> other times. Okay. Sure. For sure. But yeah, so so no, uh, Max, totally. I'm I highly recommend Long Kiss Goodnight. You you won't regret it. It was when Samuel L. Jackson had shortly after his uh, gigantic explosion onto the scene um, Pulp from, Fiction, yeah. from Pulp Fiction. I mean, even though he was doing movies before that, uh, but everyone immediately loved him, and they just wanted him to play that character all the time. And essentially, you know, not he may not be the same character, but he has a lot of great lines. You know, um, in in Long Kiss Good Night, so okay. I would definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, if it's Shane Black, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Uh, also, here's another here's another kind of like lesser known. Have you guys ever heard of the movie I Come in Peace with Dolph Lundgren? I've heard uh, is of that it, but I don't remember it though. <laughs> Oh, it's not a porno. Really, no, Max? Really? It, that fruit wasn't another, enough for you? <laughs> it's a Chris, it's it's it takes place around Christmas time, right? And and uh, Dolph Lundgren's like a cop or a detective or something, and this alien uh, comes to Earth, and he's like killing people with a CD player or something. Like I, I, that sounds really ridiculous. Yeah, I know. He's, that uh, the alien like the is um, the, the no. The alien's played by Matthias Hughes, and it's it, he has this weapon. It launches magnetic CDs that are like are razor sharp, and he would. It's called I Come in Peace because when he shows up before he kills someone, he always says I Come in Peace, and then he kills them anyway. It's kind of like the Martians from Mars Attacks, where they say, "Don't run, we are your friends," oh, and then they kill him. That is but, the best um, part of the entire movie. I love that so much. <laughs> yes. We come in peace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But definitely. I, so much. Uh, I come in peace is so fucking corny. Uh, but you you gotta love it though. It's I I really I I watched it like back when I was in high school. So maybe it doesn't like live up to the hype. Um, right, right. Another one that was really good is called In Bruges. Uh, oh, in Bruges is oh. great. Yeah. What am I trying to it's say? It's a bunch of fucking elephants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely check out uh, In Bruges. That's another Christmas one. Um, yeah. And, you know, it was one that uh, made me really like um, Colin Farrell. I mean, I liked him, but it's Colin Farrell, right? The other guy who, uh, he was in Harry Potter, the oh, redhead guy. Uh, yeah, that's I never remember his name. I love Brendan Gleeson. Bre yeah, oh, Brendan yeah. Gleeson, who he's plays great. every, he's in every fantasy movie ever as somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ev like oh, except for Lord of the Rings, he's in everything. Like, what? Yeah. Did you ever see the movie he did with, um, with, um, uh, fucking, um, War Machine. Oh my God, Don Cheadle. Oh God, what's it called? I can't remember now. Uh, uh, Brenda Gleeson and Don Cheadle. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucking great movie. Oh, it's so good. I can't remember what the fuck it's called because I'm really retarded. But anyway, oh. like, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. And I'll, um, I'll tell you guys. Hard. Okay. No, that's a that's that. The In Bruges is a good movie too. Um, Max, did you see that movie? Did you? Are you, oh, you quoted it just now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Derp. You just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, the movie that I think you're talking about, uh, Scott, is called The Guard. The Guard, yeah, yeah, it is The Guard. Yeah, actually, that's really good. I and I, I vaguely think it might be Christmas related in some way. Okay. Hmm. Maybe, but anyway, it's a good movie anyhow. But yeah, because hmm. it's got it's got Gleason in it. He's just fucking fantastic in it, actually. Well, there's that one movie with Chris Evans on the train, and it's like uh, yeah, Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer, yeah, yep, not a that's Christmas on movie. Showtime but, streaming right now, actually. but a good movie, and you should yep. definitely watch it. And yep. it's 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 got some like interesting themes. I like unique movies with the interesting world building, and Snowpiercer. Yeah, uh, isn't it um, yeah. the, uh, Dante's, uh, not Dante's Inferno, um, the seven, seven layers of hell, or whatever the fuck it is? The, um, oh, you mean in every train car? Yeah, yeah, every train car is another level of, of oh. hell, I think it was. You know what? That's, what it that's was. Dante's Inferno, but yeah, um, Dante's Inferno. Yeah, that's, but. Uh, I didn't really think of it that way, and now mm -hmm. that you think of it, I might have to watch it again to see if it's if it does that. Uh, that seems like a uh, a good analogy. Um, yeah, I'll somebody somebody had described it like that because um, I haven't watched it yet. I've got to, I've actually got it saved. I just got to hit, hit play on it. But um, 
yeah, they described it as each train car was another another level of hell that he was going through to get to to get out. So, yeah. By the way, um, if for those of you who are wondering where a certain female YouTuber got her name from, that's in our community. You might want to watch Snowpiercer. You'll know who I'm talking about when you watch it. What? <laughs> I'm so lost right now. It's, it's okay. You'll understand when you watch the movie. Okay. <laughs> so definitely watch Snowpiercer. It's good. Yeah. And yeah. and check out I Come in Peace. I'm telling you. I'm going to push it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Or even better, check out Dolph Lundgren as the Punisher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Ooh. God. Dolph. No. No. You know check, what? Out, check out Dolph Lundgren teamed up with Brandon Lee in Showdown oh, yeah. in Little Tokyo. Yep. That's you, the cheesy movie you want to see. You know what's funny, though? You know what's funny? What? The Dolph Lundgren Punisher is actually better than the Thomas Jane Punishers. <laughs> oh, I, I swear, I swear, it is it is a hundred times better. Oh, I, agree with I don't you. know. Oh, I like the Thomas joking. Jane one, but well, but Warzone okay. is the best of all of them anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Warzone is fucking incredible. I love it. <laughs> don't worry so much, it. Brian. Next year, when the Punishers and Daredevil, we'll forget all about it. Yeah. Oh, dude. That's true. That's true. It's very exciting um, times. Uh, so, okay, so we have a, oh, Enemy of the State is, uh, another one. Is it? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it takes, now, I don't know that, I mean, I'm not crazy about Will Smith, I think he's, like, really overrated. But, oh, yeah, it um, is, isn't it? Yeah. Is, okay. Also, yeah. Batman Returns. Yeah. My favorite Batman movie. Oh, what yeah. was the, um, what was the Tom Clancy, Ben Affleck movie where they blow up Ra- Baltimore? Reindeer Games, Rain- right? Wait, was it, ra- no, 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 hold no? on. Some of All Fears? Some of all fears, yeah. I think oh, okay. that, that happened around Christmas time also, actually, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. And they oh. blew up fucking Baltimore, those bastards. They blew up my home! <laughs> Damn them! Why did I say Reindeer Games? Because Ben Affleck, right? Well, yeah, because well, it's and, a bad movie. And it's well, a reindeer, and that's like Christmas. So, yeah, no, uh, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Close enough, right? I like <laughs> I like Paycheck, though. I thought that was good. Really? Yeah, I, rem- I mean, I, I remember liking it. <laughs> I, I might be wrong. I wanted to like it because I like Uma Thurman a whole bunch and would do wonderful things with her. But, um, uh, yeah, I just remember it not being terribly good. Yeah, you want to like it, though, because it was made by John Woo. You know, and I, uh, I, even though his movies tend, like, some of his movies tend to be not that great, like Mission Impossible do, uh, too. I yeah. still love him. Deuce. Well, Mission Impossible actually, no, you're, you're, Yeah, no, he's <laughs> totally right about that. The yeah, I'm not a big about, fan of it, about the thing about John Woo is when he was making films in Hong Kong, they were pretty good. Yeah. When he started making films here, the early ones were good. I mean, even I, I liked Hard Target, for example. I know that, yeah. that that may not be a popular opinion, but I liked Hard Target. Yeah, no, but I good. think that once he started to get really big, then his movies got worse. It was almost like he didn't have to either either there was too many producer you know hands in his um, too many cooks. You know, yeah, too many cooks in his yep. Chinese in his wok or whatever. Or, um, <laughs> whoa, racism, calm down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or <laughs> uh, he got so cocky that he was just like, "I'm gonna do whatever I want." Didn't yeah. he have like a show called uh, "To Catch a Thief" or something like that? Um, so yeah, I yeah. About that. yeah, it was on cable for a really short time. Oh, okay. It was based on it was based on like a, one of his movies from Hong Kong. It just starred like American actors. I, I could be wrong, but I think that's right. You know what? The chat's bringing up a good point here, real quick. We've we've totally been remiss in not talking about Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. I mean, <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with us? What? Oh God, we're awful people. I'm I'm so sorry, chat. You guys are you, you keep us humble. Thank you. <laughs> Kirk Cameron, fuck that guy. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> there was the, we we also got to celebrate. We can't just celebrate Christmas. We have to look at other holidays, such as Life Day, which was celebrated <laughs> in the Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. So, are you guys gonna watch the Star Wars Christmas special? Because yeah, it's probably I really important that you I do. Um, do you need it, Brian? I need it. Yes, I can hook you up. I'll hook hook you me up. up. I want to watch the Star Wars. Max, Christmas you want it too? Uh, yes, absolutely. I'll make um, it happen. <laughs> you know what? I, why don't we have like movies like that anymore? Where like you know, <laughs> action. Wait, wait. No, we're action you, you heroes. Have to ask why? Like, have you seen the Star Wars Christmas <laughs> special? Do you, you have fam- to ask why still? I'm sorry, Scott. Are you familiar with the concept of? <laughs> 
Are you familiar Suspension with Suspension of disbelief? Suspension of disbelief. <laughs> Oh my god, that that seriously, we should do a show just on the fucking and like we should don't, play it twenty seconds at a time and fucking yeah. talk about. Oh my god, that would well, be that'll crazy. be forever. And don't forget oh. the weed because we gotta we gotta oh. be in the same mental state that everyone else was when they were yeah. making it. Looking like um, Carrie Fisher was high as fuck during that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that movie. Yes. Like seriously, that is like one of the most disjointed things. Oh man, it is so fucking weird. Is so weird. I think the only way to like enjoy that movie would just to be to fucking like drop like four tabs of acid and just go to town on it. Because otherwise, it, I mean, it doesn't really make sense anyway. But that that would probably clear up some of the some of the stuff about it. So I wonder yeah. if there's because the Christmas special was old, right? It was it was basically on VHS yeah. if you were lucky and if you could mm-hmm. find it. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you could find it on YouTube or somewhere, is it like? Because I want to see it, but I, I'd like to see it all remastered and cleaned up. Maybe George Lucas should make a special edition, like add a couple CG monsters and a deleted scene. <laughs> you could put Anakin in there. Anakin's yeah, put Anakin's ghost in there. You know, Jabba the Hutt, like whatever. You know, that might be the only circumstance where George Lucas would have his hands on something old and Star Wars related, and it wouldn't suck anymore because he tried to improve <laughs> it, it up any more than it already was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. oh God. Yes, people are like, <laughs> yeah, B. Arthur was, B. Arthur was in it. <laughs> yes, yes, he was. James, um, what was it, James Carney from uh, The Honeymooners was in oh it, too? Oh, my God. God Art, damn. Art Carney. Art, Art Carney. There you go, thank you, thank you. Art Carney was also in True Lies. Yeah, was he? he yes, he was in the beginning. He blew up. Uh, he he blew was, up? Oh, no, not True Lies, I'm sorry, Last Action Hero. He was oh, in okay. the beginning of that, and he blew yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was like, that's random, what's... Is that Norton? He even he was like dressed like him still. I think. Oh, was he really? Oh, but I think he, I think he had, like a, a wife beater and like yeah. Oh pants. dang. Nice. Um, but he didn't have the hat, so. Oh okay. Uh, but yeah, so. So yeah, Christmas can still be great. Um, uh-huh. and and uh, you know, there's there's lots of great Christmas things that you can do. Also, oh, uh, as an aside, not all of us watch movies, so we were talking a little bit before the show about yeah. video games that have Christmas stuff in them. And there aren't many, but Max mentioned that uh, Grand Theft Auto V has like a... Is it like DLC, or is it just like a patch or something? No, they just like you... I, I don't know, maybe you download something, but usually yeah. around Christmas, say... Uh, yeah, it's an update, so it's a free whenever... Update. Yeah. Yeah, whenever Christmas rolls around, they'll cover Los Santos in snow, and then it'll suddenly become a whole lot harder to drive, and everything's <laughs> foggy. You know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And stuff and Christmas sweaters and all kinds of shit like that that you could get. Yeah, oh, that's sweet. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like, they give you a bunch of new masks. They give you like hats. Um, they give you Christmas sweaters. Um, different heads that you can get too. Like you can get a, a gingerbread man head and a couple other ones. Like yeah, it's pretty funny. Like snowman head and shit like that. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, the, you know, there aren't a lot of games that actually you know center around the holidays or or have a story that passes through them. But um, if you guys play MMOs, oftentimes uh, MMOs will have events that are Christmassy. I I know that uh, when I used to play Champions all the time. There'd be a Christmas event, as City of Heroes was like that too, where you can, uh, you know, go. I think you go get presents and you could open them and share them with other people, and you might get like costume unlocks and shit. And they'll have snow, and you know, they'll have like special quests and missions. Oh, you know what else? Like Actually, I just thought of this. Um, Rocket League is doing that right now. You can get uh, antenna toppers and hats and a couple other things that are all Christmas themed. I totally forgot about that one. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, that's so cool. if you haven't played Rocket League, you should play Rocket League because I hear Rocket awesome. League is really fucking addictive. Like everybody's oh, playing it right now. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, and it's a good game to play with friends for sure because you can play with bots if you don't have enough people on to, and you don't want to play like you know multiplayer. You just pump up bots and you play like that. It's, yeah, it's so, great. It's good. So time. if you want to basically avoid people telling you to to like that they fucked your mom last night, <laughs> you. Yeah, well, yeah, there that yeah. Yes. <laughs> then I'm you pretty sure the bots do that. Do <laughs> the bots don't. Well, sure. until yeah. until AI, you know, becomes yeah. sentient and they program trolling uh, behavior right into it, because that's the first <laughs> thing I'm gonna do. Right. Seriously. So you know, I'm gonna turn that on so I can like but, really yeah. feel like I'm in the experience. Mess with the troll slider or the bots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome. 
awesome. Mildly offensive to completely racist asshole. Like there's a <laughs> <laughs> Or just like mildly offensive to twelve year old. You know, just that's yeah. the end of the center. <laughs> it's like it starts up you're not very good at this game. <laughs> goes, you're a fucking faggot <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they need to, yeah, they need to, like, I don't play a whole lot of sports games, but, you know, some sort of kooky studio, like the guys that made Bulletstorm or something, needs to make, like, a hockey game where they can have, like, troll settings, and you're like, what age do you want your troll to be? Uh, a five-year-old who shouldn't be playing this game, or a 60-year-old who's trying to, you know, swear using old-time swearing? And, you know what's <laughs> funny that you bring up a good hockey game, like, is uh, there's this game that came out, um, it's called NHL Hits. Yeah. And you could customize all your characters, and um, it was really funny because you could actually you could give them like like the physics actually however you built your character like that actually was affected by physics in the game. So you could make you could make these little tiny bodies and give them these giant fucking bobble heads, and they would constantly be falling over because their heads are so heavy and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And you can like make them super huge and bulky and fat and stuff. Oh, it's great! It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Oh. Somebody in the chat just said the Secret World MMO usually has Christmas events, usually oh, yeah. starring usually starring your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, fuck yeah. there wasn't if there was an artificial intelligence that we could set to troll people, but only use like like, 19th century fucking Edwardian <laughs> insults. I would use that all the fucking time. You're not very good at this game, like, you penny stinker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? That would be amazing. I love that. <laughs> Guys, what kind of insults would that mean? Like, <laughs> who is your haberdasher? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, who... who uh, that, that would be amazing. I would play the shit out of that. That would be great. Um, we Nobody would know how patent. to react to it, though. They'd be like, what the fuck? What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, Scott, we need to patent this right now. We need to yeah. sell this. Oh, oh so sweet. Sweet. This sweet, sounds... Man. This is like a, a revolutionary idea for the world. <laughs> I, I think it is. But the, here's the thing, though, Scott. This is why yeah. I think it'd be great. If they did it, people would actually start to adapt that language into their lexicon, and we would bring back oh, yeah. classy insults will make a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody exactly. would be using them. You know, I bite, I bite my oh. thumb at thee, sir. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it's like, yeah, oh, and, and just imagine the stuff that would, like, just because of, uh, like, uh, just online cultures, how they warp and morph words and stuff, the kind of things that would pop out of that. Oh, man, that would be kind of ridiculous. Yes, that's that's amazing. Good times, um, good times. Uh, also, uh, lastly, I would say, it's just a, it's a serious recommendation. So a lot of you guys are probably going to be spending your holiday with family or friends um, because they usually celebrate their uh, holiday on Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, we just, like, hang out together. So I would recommend, if, if at all, if, if you want to, play some video games that have, like, couch co-op. Now, couch co-op and couch competition is actually kind of a bit of a rare bird these days. Like when I was yeah. younger, I remember you could play games like Gauntlet and Bal and Bomberman and uh, you know uh, shit like that, like like locally. But to most of the time, the multiplayer stuff is online. Although I would recommend a couple of really great couch co-op games. They just well, not just, but I recently got to try the newest Gauntlet game, and it is awesome. And I'm really excited to play it with my friends. Um, because I think we're going to have a blast, and it's very much like a, you know, it's it's not Christmassy, but the, the, the couch co-op thing can be a lot of fun. I, I just have to say that I really, really recommend um, the new Gauntlet or a game made by the same studio, which is called Arrowhead Studios. They made a game called Helldivers, where it's a four-player oh, yeah. co-op game where you get dropped down to an alien planet, and you have to, you know, essentially bring democracy to other planets. It's it's basically like a play off of uh, Starship Troopers, combined with a bunch of other sort of sci-fi, um, you know, tropes. But it's a lot and of that's fun. It's on sale on Steam right now. Hell Divers? Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like if you, well, can you do couch co-op on a PC? You just have to get multiple controllers or whatever. Um, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I have my PC hooked up to my television, so I can. It's in my living room, right. but I do most of my co couch co-op stuff on a console. But yes, Hell Divers is really good. 
and the new gauntlet looks really good. Um, that's just two off the top of my head that if you want to try them out, you know, you should definitely oh, check them out. Oh, I apologize. It's not actually on sale currently, but it probably will be on sale sometime uh, between now and the 4th of January. Yeah. I thought it was. It was on sale a couple of weeks ago, so I apologize. My bad. Yeah. Hey, oh, you know, right, everybody. And if you uh, if you get Gauntlet or Helldivers and you're on the PlayStation Network, uh, look me up at Zanamaru, Z-A-N-A-M-A-R-U, so we can play together, because um, I'm always looking to play with people. So. Oh, you want to know another great games. game, too? If we're going to do some game recommendations? Yeah. And it's super, super fucking cheap right now on Steam, is a game called Chivalry. Um, it's two dollars oh. and forty nine cents, and it is a blast. Is that it the is one? Super wait, fun. Is that the one that has like samurai and knights and? Oh well, that's the second about... one. Yeah. The, oh, okay. Well, the, the base game itself is just it's all knight related combat, but in the, um it's uh something greatest warriors or whatever the hell it was like based off of that they they worked a tie into that TV show Deadliest Warrior when they brought in the samurais and all yeah. that other stuff. But if you just get the base game, it's like $2. And like I said, it's like $2.49. And it is fucking hilarious. It is so much fun. It is just, it's a super, super stripped down, very streamlined game where basically you're running around as knights and you can have you can have crossbows and stuff, but you get like broadswords and maces and shit like that. And you just run around and just beat the holy hell out of each other. It's fucking brilliant. Oh, that it's sounds so really fun. cool. Yeah, it does it's sound it's really a good. great, great game. It's a good time. And for $2.49, yeah. you're losing money not buying it. Come on. Tell oh, me. I'm going to have to check that out. I uh, can't afford to not buy it. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. Right? I know it sounds like we're totally like advertising for these people, but we're just recommending good games. We're not getting paid for this. Yeah. Yeah, By the way, not. Brian, I might be getting the PS4 for uh, Christmas, so I'm going to have to... Woo, like, get your, oh, uh... wait. So, wait. How are you playing Metal Gear Solid on PC? No, I'm I'm a fucking I'm Oh, a you're an Xbox guy, that's right. Yeah. Oh, Max. Okay. I'll get your get you get your gamer tag then. Oh, you have Xbox? I have X Bone and X Bone PC. Dude, I'm looking everywhere online for people in our community to find somebody that has an Xbox One. Nobody has one, and then you tell me that you have okay. We'll, okay, we'll work out the details later. Well do you, if you... do you have MGS five? No, I do not, unfortunately. Oh, fuck, I wanted to raid your FOB, take all this. <laughs> you wanna what a who what now? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Brian. No, I was gonna say if you do get a PS4, let me know. Uh, uh, well, there's another game on the on the PlayStation. I think it's an exclusive though. It's called uh, Fat Princess Adventures, and that's actually <laughs> a four player a four player co op uh, game. That's a, another good couch uh, multiplayer. So should ju- definitely check that out too. Um, yeah, because you know that that shit's fun. Fucking a man. Yeah, Fat yeah. Princess. That game is sort of like. You know, every feminist nightmare. It's oh, like, absolutely. Like the patriarchy incarnate. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, because you, like, you get to feed fat checks and you get to be chivalrous towards them and get, there's blood all over the screen. It's fucking amazing. Them? Yeah, it's like the anti social Justice Warrior game. And it, yeah. didn't even, it didn't even know that it was when it was made because at the time we weren't like, you know, this shit was, wasn't as ramped up. Right, and so, okay, I, I got to tell you the, 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 the premise of the original Fat Princess. So the premise uh-huh. is, is essentially you, it's sort of like playing an, uh, a, an RTS but you are playing individual soldiers instead of controlling the entire battlefield. And you uh-huh. go online with other people. And oh, that's cool. uh, essentially, you put on a hat to change your class. So there's, like, different classes, and they all have different, like, you know, advantages, disadvantages, you know, how it goes. But the goal is generally you have to go to the other opponent's base, kidnap their princess, who's sitting on a... Th- um, oh, no, yeah, you have to go get your princess back from them, rather. Uh-huh. And um, rescue your, you have to rescue your princess and prevent them from rescuing their princess from your base. Well, and like the way you the flag with princesses exactly, but the way that you do it, <laughs> yes, but the print that they're princesses. But the way that you do it though is to to make it more difficult for your princess to be captured. Um, you can feed them this magic cake, and you give them a couple of slices of cake, and they get really fat, right? And when they get to maximum fatness, it takes like three or four dudes to carry the princess. Yeah, so, shit. you know, yeah. So the, you basically make it more difficult to transport the princess from uh, the one castle to the other castle. Wow. So, yeah, and it is like, yeah, probably the most... And, and while that's going on, even though the characters are all like little cute little guys with like bows and arrows and swords and stuff... They are dying in the most horrific ways. Like their heads get cut off. And there's <laughs> yeah. blood everywhere, and you know, like chivalry. So yeah, it's, it's it's gory. Yeah, it's uh, violent as fuck. And yet it's so beautiful to look at. I'm not talking <laughs> about the fat princess. It, it, 
Oh yes. god, that is fucking great. And, and when, <laughs> uh, yeah, and when the plate when uh, Sony made their game uh, PlayStation All Stars, which is basically their version of Smash Brothers, the oh. Fat Princess is one of the playable characters, and she oh, no has attacks where she runs for cake and kills everyone in her path, and she's like this, you know, this huge chick with a scepter. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's there. I think I think that sells itself. I'm just saying. That's fucking like, great. It's, you know, it's quite amazing. Uh, no doubt, no doubt there. Okay. Oh, that's good um, stuff. <laughs> let me... Uh, I'm going to read a couple of uh, letters, and then we'll call it a day. Cool. But before I do, um, those of you guys who are in the chat, do you have any other recommendations for Christmas things that we didn't mention? I did say some... Uh, I saw that someone said Black Adder Christmas Carol is something that they would recommend. Um, I never saw it, but it does sound great because it's Black Adder. So, but I'm sure that there's other things that we overlooked. Please leave a comment. Also, if there's any of the films that, you know, you like, uh, like, you know, tell us what you think about uh, what we talked about and if you have any additional suggestions. Uh, okay, so let's see. I'm going to go to this letter here. Okay, Gray writes, Hello, Badgers. On a recent discussion about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, both Allison and Anna laid into hope from Ant-Man for That Is How You Punch scene. Both pointed out both pointed out that if it were a man that hit a woman, there would be hell to pay. I have to disagree on this as this view is too narrow. What happened in that scene is a common trope in both heist and buddy cop genres. The upstart newbie thinks he's a he's hot shit, so a veteran of the group puts him in his place by showing him up on whatever tasks they're applying themselves to. This is what the scene is. Scott is a newbie, Hope is the veteran. I don't disagree that if the genders were reversed there would be hell to pay. That is completely true and completely bogus. But what if Hope was a man as well? The scene and our views on the characters would not change in the slightest. One of the goals of the Badgers, if one of the goals is for the Badgers, is to is for the actions of men and women to be viewed equally, then this should have been held up as an example of just that. Hope was acting as a male would within the trope, and the characters reacted to her as they would if they had been male. Uh, when evaluating the reactions to a particular action based on the genders of the participants, one must not just flip the genders, but also mix them. By also looking at the male-female interaction, we see that Hope is not getting away with it because she's a woman, but that is what is expected of the newbie-vet interaction in spite of her being a woman. All right, well, thanks, Gray, for writing that letter. Um, I won't speak for Allison and Anna, but I will say this. Uh, I don't see how Hope is a newbie, or I'm sorry, is a veteran if this is a heist that she's never done before, she's never worn the suit. Like, there's no... There isn't really enough information to, to give me the impression that she's a veteran in this area because none of the characters involved in the heist have actually ever done the heist before. or Nor are they experts. Like, this isn't like Ronin, which is a really fucking good movie. Well, except for Scott. Where, except for Scott, right, who is, in a way, the veteran, right? Because he's right. done the whole stealing thing. Yeah. But it's not like the movie Ronin where I believe Sean Bean gets shown up by... Um, Robert De Niro, De Niro. Uh, yeah. to demonstrate that you know he is not as experienced, and uh, I think that this is not quite the same situation because you know as I said before, um, they've never done the heist before. Secondly, uh, I wouldn't, I personally don't have a problem with her punching him, but the only reason why I do is because the reverse wouldn't be allowed, and so you feel like there's a bit of um, there, there. She's not just hitting him; she's hitting him knowing that he can't hit her back. So right. there, there is something about that that is just a little bit irritating, but not like, you know, uh, something I can't completely cope with. Um, the other thing is, uh, I think they mentioned, um, both pointed out, I have to disagree, uh, in the scene both are, it's important that not only, um, let me see, I was trying to see here, not only to flip the genders, but mix them. If they were two males, then no one would have noticed. Well, yeah, because that would have been totally fine. Whatever. Um, if there were two females, that may also be problematic also. Although not for me. I personally don't care. Like, you know, they should. you should be able to do that. But the thing is, I don't think the film's writers would have done that. And that's what I think anyway. Do yeah. you guys have any thoughts on that? The only time that, uh, like, you would ever see a man hitting a woman is if the circumstances for him doing it are either in self-defense or it's just so ridiculous that it actually adds to the comedy, i.e. when Simon Pegg uh, kicked, drop kicked that woman in the face in the movie Hot Fuzz. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, was, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so great. Uh, okay. Oh, no, I'm just, yeah, you guys, you guys got it. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Um, 
I don't think I have anything worthwhile to add, so I'll just shut up. Let me get another letter here. All right, KD writes, uh, Hi, Badgers. I was wondering if anyone had thoughts on the latest season of the television show Fargo. And I will try to frame this without spoilers. From the film to the TV series, Fargo had some terrific and memorable characters. I would love to hear any thoughts that you all may have about the series, but there was one moment in particular that caught my interest. Without spoilers, one character is driving another character uh, to when he tells the story of a moment he saw in the Vietnam War. He told the story of how he and other soldiers would take people off of helicopters and push the helicopters into the sea in order to make room. He went on with the story and concluded with, and I'm paraphrasing, it's not to burden to save, it's not our burden to save lives, it is our privilege. The other character in the car responded by relating how tough their life was in that no one understood her. As she went on, he responded, people died, and shut her up immediately. I was wondering if any of you saw that glorious red pill moment, and if you have any thoughts on the series. Thank you for your time, and keep up the good work. Well, that's got to be season two of Fargo, because I watched season one, and I loved it, but I haven't actually had a chance to watch season two. Have you guys yeah. ever seen the show? I have Not never. No, I haven't seen the show, and that's mainly just because I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I, um, I did see the movie. Um, Frances McDormand, I believe, was the pregnant cop. It was a pretty good movie, but yeah, aside from that, I heard it was good. Just haven't really had much of time to sit down and watch it. I don't really have the, uh, the time nowadays to binge watch TV, but I'll definitely check it out sometime. Yeah. Scott? Didn't like the movie, haven't watched the show. Okay. All right. So, yeah, there isn't much that we can say to it, although that is that is a pretty good moment that they put out there. Um, so I, I guess, you know, respect for that. So we'll see. Um, somebody in the chat says, what breed is a doge? It's a Shiba Inu. Yeah. Okay. So let me read the last letter for today. Uh, all right. Georgie Latev writes, Hi, Badgers. I have some ideas about the members of the Feminist Legion of Doom and their corresponding comic book counterparts. It's a humorously scary how well they fit into these DC villains' roles. If only we could lock them all in the Phantom Zone. All right, so he cast them. Great. Lex Luthor is Eve Ensler. <laughs> Hold on, so let me we, look that up. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, Eve, Eve Ensler, look her up. Her um, bald. Mm. Is she bald? No, I, I'm just thinking her bald, uh, though. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm the greatest criminal <laughs> mastermind of our time. Um, oh, she's the vagina monologue chick. Okay, sure. Oh, yeah. Zoe Quinn is the Joker. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No, Zoe Quinn's not, she's not smart enough to be the Joker. <laughs> but she's <laughs> but she's kind of bat -sitting, bat shit insane, though, right? Uh, I mean, no, Brianna Wu would be the Joker, maybe, because she's more oh, fucking crazy. That's pretty good. But let's see what let's see what he's yeah. let's see what he's got. Okay. Bell Hooks as the Black Manta. Ooh, that's racist. <laughs> um <laughs> Come on, wow. you can go for Amanda Waller. Well, oh, that's good. Uh, Amanda oh. Waller's too much of a oh, too she? much of a resourceful woman. Well, yeah. Amanda Waller is she's chaotic neutral though. I I would say. True. Yeah. She's not all evil. Um, Anita Sarkeesian as Brainiac. <laughs> uh, Ooh, that's a tough one. It's basically a a, a machine. Mm -hmm. uh, like the the Brainiac, the, the 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 robot, or the green guy with the plugs in his head. Cause there, or is that also a robot? I don't know. There's like multiple. Well, DC... that's Brainiac Five. Well, oh, there's so many different Brainiacs. Yeah, they have, so, look, yeah. DC has got to get their shit together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just you know what? Because to me, like seriously, to me, the Bruce Tim Brainiac is the only Brainiac. I know that there's like supposedly like a green dude in purple outfit. No, fuck yeah, that well, guy. that's a Legion of Superheroes though. He's from the future. No, no, not that one. There's mm -hmm. actually a villainous Brainiac from the old Super Friends cartoon. Oh, oh, right, that's right, right. That's a right. dude with plugs in his head. Okay. Yeah, well, the, that's, the, that's kind of what the, the one from Legion of Superheroes is based off of, because it's, a, it's yes. definitely a human, not robot. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any chance, like, just, I'm just curious, before you read the rest of this, did he yeah. happen to cast John McIntosh as Mr. Mixelplick? Uh, no, but that would be good, because I don't yeah. think he's casting Mr. Mixelplick at all. Okay. Um, Okay, so Randy Harper is Gorilla Grodd, but blue. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. High fives. Uh, okay. High um, fives. <laughs> Stephanie Guthrie is Sinestro. Um, okay. 
<laughs> oh, no, wait, let's, I'm not sure who that is. Stephanie, Stephanie Guthrie? Stephanie Guthrie is the, is the woman who got the uh, the guy um, the the guy uh, banned oh. from Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she's Sinestro? Yeah. Why, why would she be Sinestro? Why? Well, let's see. Sinestro uses fear um, yeah. as a weapon, and um, perhaps if she is dealing with uh, the guy on the... Is it, what's the name of the guy? Uh, Gregory Allen Elliott? Um, if, yeah. if we made Gregory Allen Elliott into the Green Lantern, um, then that, that could make sense. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a bit of a stretch, but maybe it's well, just like where she landed. Work. But yeah, yeah, Stephanie Guthrie is Sinestro. Okay. Um, Andrea Dworkin as Solomon Grundy. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know what? It, you know, I'm what? almost more inclined to put Zoe Quinn as Solomon Grundy just because she's just this massive, dumb force. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> oh. oh, man. Okay. Uh, Andrea Dworkin as Solomon Grundy. Okay. Glorious. Actually, no, Dworkin kind of... I th- you know, I'm going to have to go back and do a little recasting, but I think she would make a better Sinestro. Dorkin? Yeah. She, she does look like she's Solomon kinda, Grundy, well, though. She's just kind of evil, though. Yeah, but you Dorkin know? looks like looks a little Grundy-ish. I can well, see yeah. visually how that works, but yeah. behavior-wise, it, it could be good for Sinestro. She's a is she a fear monger? That like that that's um I think uh-huh. that's how it would fit in. Yeah, I don't know. Those are okay. Good, no, I got I got I got the perfect casting for Andrew Dworkin. Picture this, guys. Andrew Dworkin. As the Danny DeVito version of the Penguin. Oh, Ooh. yes. <laughs> I want a nice Ma- glass Dude. of ice water. You know what Macintosh would be? It just came to me. He'd be Toy Man. Oh, shit, dude. Toy Man Fuck looks like yeah. him already. Like the, he's, well, he's, what's up about the Bruce Tim version? The cool you know, he's a fucking marionette. He's, you know, he's, fucking, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's a puppet master kind of guy. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. He does oh, look, yeah. yeah, he does look a bit like him. <laughs> or, or he's that. What's the guy, the Batman villain that has the ventriloquist doll? Um, oh, Scarface. Yeah, Scarface. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh shit. Him and Indy Serkis and her Scarface. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, fuck it That's up. awesome. Okay. <laughs> a couple more to go. Gloria Steinem as Bizarro. Um. Mm-hmm. Eh, okay. I mean. Well, because she kind of has that wrinkly ass face, like Bizarro <laughs> does. Yeah, I, and and uh, well, she would have to be the opposite of someone else. But, yeah. but I mean, I'm not totally against that. Gloria Steinem yeah. is Bizarro. Uh, Brianna Wu is the Scarecrow. Okay, so oh, that's yeah. not bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I, I'm kind of partial to the Joker, but you know, yeah. I'll go with that. We can go with that. Yeah. Um, and Big Red is Giganta. Oh, uh, don't do that. Don't soil <laughs> that beautiful character, Giganta, with that. Uh, I mean... Like, well, again, though, I could see it. Like, yeah, yeah. Gr- her growing and saying, <laughs> we are a face um, at giant size. As long as she's not wearing that Giganta outfit. Yeah. Oh, God. Ugh. Um, oh, we're and, body shaming. <laughs> yeah. And then lastly, oh, bonus non-Legion member, because this isn't really a member of the, of the Legion of Doom. Kate Brooks as Two-Face. Um, oh, oh, burn! burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did damn! You, did you catch that, Sargon? Oh, uh, damn. Kate Brooks as Two Face. Oh, very nice, very nicely yeah. punned. <laughs> um, we we need good. to send this person a fucking trophy for that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Georgie, well done. Oh. Everybody, everybody does. Everybody deserves that. And let's see what people in the chat are saying, because I'm sure they that have like, a badge, or badge of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> you know? they deserve a badge or badge. Oh, God. Um, if such a thing exists, <laughs> if it doesn't, we should make it happen. Sinestro what? with problem glasses. Maybe that's the ring, Sir Jesticles. <laughs> <laughs> the problem glasses is the ring of fear. Oh fuck yeah! Because you know they're not wearing a wedding ring. Uh oh. Or. Uh, or, you know, Kate Brooks is Talia al Ghul from The Dark Knight Rises. Kate Brooks, Kate Brooks. is Talia al Ghul. Oh, yes, right. From the <laughs> the, 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 um, the inevitable betrayal. Yeah. Right. Of, uh, Spoiler, by the way. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, new SJW movie coming out. Randy Harper will be played by Danny DeVito. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that gorilla broadcasting. That was good. Yeah. Okay, so... Fucking perfect. I'm going to end it on that. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us on the show today. 
Uh, if you have any comments, please, um, you know, just leave them in below, and uh, you know what to do. Go to oh. Russ. What's Scott? What's up? Can I show something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, we're we're trying to get another AirPlay going. We're trying to get AirPlay 2.0 going, and we're it's a little bit rough. So if you guys, I don't have the link handy, but I'll, I'll try and get it to Brian or something. Maybe if you can put it up, or you can just look up AirPlay 2.0. Um, but we're trying to get that going for either January or February. Uh, it's pretty important to the whole, you know, Gamergate and just journalism in general. So if you guys take a look at it, you know, if you can help out, that'd be great. And if not, no problems. <laughs> Spread the word if you can, though. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Thank you, uh, Scott. So, guys, uh, yeah, so if, uh, you know, if you want to send us a letter and you want us to read it on air, send it to topic at badgerpod.com. Um, we're a bit backed up on letters, but we're getting through them as quickly as possible. We'll probably do a mailbag pretty soon just so we can, like, kind of clear it out if we can. Um, mm -hmm. But please send us a uh, mail because we, like, we, lo we love getting it. Uh, and also patreon.com forward slash honeybadgerradio. So, um, um, Max, did you want to shill something too? Uh, I just wanted to say, because this will be the last show that I'm on uh, before Christmas, I just wanted to wish everybody, all our international friends, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Quasi Kwanzaa, Tip Top Tet, and a solemn and dignified Ramadan. Now back to my god, Brian Wait, Martinez. Fe Festivus for don't the rest of us? Yep. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, don't forget Festivus for the rest of us, uh, Life Day... And uh, Krampus, and what's the other thing? There was another <laughs> day, if you watch The Simpsons. Yeah. If you're late, Solstice, sorry, belated Solstice, um, whatever, man. You, if you're you, a Wiccan, you. fuck you. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's it. So you guys have a good holiday. Happy holidays, everybody.